Yo, this is Red Man in the building. Right now, you are checking out my boy, Mr. A, at the set. Talking about real life education, community addiction, and just real people in general. So, Mr. A, let's get this shit going on. Light your blunts, fasten your seatbelts, and squeeze on your girl titty. Ow! Mr. A, at the set, is starting now. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mr. A, as always. And uh, we're keeping it classic, as always, on the set. Real people telling real stories. As always, tonight, we have a very special guest. Musician, songwriter, composer, performer, Mr. Ed. I don't want to mangle his last name, Varston. I'm going to say Varston. I'll let him tell you when he comes in the room. This is a very talented individual. He does all forms of music, pop, reggae, reggaeton, uh, dance music, everything you could think of. And he's a BX native. And um, I'm hoping to see very big things from him in the near future. So as always, we're trying to get ahead of the curve and bring you something that you don't know about. This guy has a very determined spirit. And uh, I feel like he's going to be making a lot of noise in the time to come. So if you see him in the future or you hear his name, just know you saw it here first on the set. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome tonight's guest, Mr. Ed Varston. Ed, what up? What's good, man? How's it going? What's going on? I'm good, man. You already know, always working. Music's in my mind 24-7. So let's go. I hear you. I hear you. So so let's get this shit started correctly. <laughs> Tell everybody where you're from. Well, I'm my name's Ed Varson. I grew up in the Bronx in New York. You already know everybody who's from New York know what it is in the Bronx. Growing up there, BX all day. The X. Um I've been doing music pretty much since, from what I was told by my parents. You know, every parent tells you yeah, certain things, but since I've been singing since like yeah. I was two, from what I heard. But yeah, I've been doing wow. music all my life. Music is uh, is pretty much my passion. Like, the passion for it is unrivaled. <laughs> okay. So is there any... I'm I'm sorry. No, I, I gotta ask you this: Is there any blood? Is there any lineage? Is there any like blood from the family? Like, does is the music passed down? That talent is it passed down? Are the relatives, uncles, tias, titis, whatever? Yes. Um, from my mother's side, my my grandfather, some of my uncles, they all played guitar, they sang music. Um, I think I had a family member who was a, a, a famous singer in Puerto Rico, but I don't know too much information about that. <laughs> but the, <laughs> okay. but the lineage is there; it's been passed down. You know, I have. It's I in the blood. Myself, and she sings even better than I do. So. Re oh wow! Okay, okay. So this is definitely a family trait, but you you have become passionate enough to to pursue it as a lifestyle and, and a way of living. So was it, were you like from elementary school all the way through high school, were you doing talent shows? Were teachers recognizing your talent from a young age and things of that nature? Yes, as a matter of fact, I, when I was in like fourth, fifth grade around there, I did, a, I did a talent show. And I think that's when I really started realizing that this might be something that I can do like career wise because I did this talent show and what was it? I think it was a it was a backstreet boy record, right? <laughs> okay. So the music is all, you know, <clears throat> five part harmony and stuff like that. And I went yeah. up there and I and I sang in front of the whole school. Like all the grades was there, all the way up to eighth grade. And I was in like fifth grade and I hit a high note in one of the parts of the record that stretched and I and I held the note so perfectly 
that everyone lost their minds in the, in the whole auditorium. And at that moment is when I felt it. I was like, yeah, this, this is my calling. This is me. <laughs> so the girls must have been on you. Yeah. 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 Eighth grade girls. And I was in fifth grade. So I, oh, wow. Yeah, so it was yeah, they, they don't like, care. I was like, okay, this voice is not to be trifled with at all. Nah, that's now let me ask you um what were your earlier influences as far as musical taste because i grew up in the 80s and early 90s right i grew up in hip-hop actually you know i i watched it from a very early age into my teen years so hip-hop is is a staple in my music collection but my influences have come from my mother's taste um she was Motown, R&B, you know, from back in the late, mid to late 70s to early 80s. So so that's where my music is really steeped in, and I love reggae, like, heavy. So so what are some of the influences in your musical taste? Like, what are they? That's the thing, you know, I grew up around so much different type of music because my father had his own specific taste where I would listen, I would be hearing uh, Rakim and, and all the, and LL Cool J and all these different hip hop records. And then uh -huh. my mother would be with the salsa music and the Spanish ballads and my pops would play R&B, Ron Isley and all this Michael Jackson and all this different type of music. So all that, just hearing all that is like, my brain was like a sponge. I just started absorbing all the different vibes from all the different music. And it started to create like my own type of way of thinking when it came to music, genre wise, you right. know, like, which is why now I do, I can do pretty much like so many different genres of music and I do it really well. I have so many different records. Yeah. Recorded. I Already, so. I heard a song. I heard a song, and I was like, "Yo, you getting this fucking Ed Sheeran on? What's going on over okay. here?" I'm not gonna lie, that pop music, I love it because for me, really, you can like you can really, really show off your your passion and your skills in the music on those records. And mm. every single record that I do is pretty much like a storyline. Like the records, they come to me depending on on the vibe that i get from the beat at that moment and it's like i right. just get completely immersed in it i see everything mm. that i'm about to write about i'll see it beforehand and i'm like okay so i'm gonna describe this this way and okay all right oh she broke his heart all right cool you know and i always say i say his but is the in the song is technically me but i'm not actually it's not personal life stories Right. It's, right, 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 right. Things that come to me. It's like if I'm writing a movie script. That's how I feel when I'm writing my movie. I get it. It's like a movie script. All right, so this I'm going to write it this way, and it's going to be played out this way. So now when I go in the booth, I get into the mindset of who that character is that I'm portraying in that record, and just the emotions come out so vivid that you can actually you, you feel it. You feel it very in-depth. Yeah, you definitely when you when you sing a record that way in such a way that you're you, the audience can feel the connection between you and your words is when people will, you know, really, really focus and, and be attracted to you as a singer. Right. Um, I, I think of so many great singers that have come and gone through the years um, outside of pop. Who is one of your favorite singers? Outside of pop, hmm. I would say Neo is definitely one of my favorite singers. Oh, okay. Usher. Okay. I listened to a lot of Usher okay. growing up. That's how that's how the harmonies <laughs> got into my mind. So, okay. You know, you, <laughs> okay. You, you pick up so much from these artists when you listen to them, especially at a young age. Like between um. Between Usher and Neo and Justin Timberlake as well was definitely okay. was definitely something. Do you do uh, uh, like when I think of singers? You know, a lot of a lot of people don't like today. I really don't think a lot of people, like the majority of people, 
don't understand what it really means to be a singer, right? So you can listen to somebody like say, who's out now female wise? Like I hear J Lo, she can't sing. She's she's a pop product. She's nice to look at. She's pretty. She dances. She puts on a show. She's an entertainer, but she's not a singer, right? Now you line somebody up. And and even in the vein of pop music, let's say somebody like Whitney Houston, may she rest in peace. Whitney was a singer. Very powerful singer. She had pipes. When you know, before she fell into what she fell into, Whitney could, yo, know, she could go crazy, right? That that's singing to me. You know, there's people that sing through their nose and they have equipment that makes them sound nice, right? So for me are there is there anybody else that you kind of feel like yo you know what this person this artist his his range the vocal range or her vocal range is astounding whether it be pop or any genre you know whose voice is crazy adele adele Mm. That's a singer right there. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, she could throw down. She oh, definitely could throw down. Um, <laughs> Mary J. Blige, too. Yes, you know, it's Mary. Got, yeah. You know what I mean? She, she got that voice. Yeah, she definitely does. Um, Another thing, um, you know, as an artist, a lot of artists today, uh, I'm a huge Prince fan. Right? Prince when i was a fan had enough material to drop 12 albums when i was a fan this is purple rain time you know i would read up on him right great artist right i a lot of artists today uh mainstream artists aren't musicians and it's one of the things that i i was sort of fascinated with you about because i understand you play like you play instruments you you have the ability to play I, 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 Got a, got a, got a little, a little here and there, brushing up on some things, but yeah. Do, do you, do you favor uh, instrumentation over electronic music, or you mean like, like, is there a pocket you like, like to be in? You mean in general, beat wise, like when I'm working on a record? Yeah, beat. Yeah. If I hear piano on the beat is over. It's the piano. <laughs> if I between piano and guitar, but if I hear piano. Cause you know what it is too. I have a, I have a very strong passion for listening to jazz music. So mm, okay. Once I hear pianos and I feel like it got that little, that, them, them chords that you hear in the jazz music, and it, it just catches mm-hmm. me. As soon as it catches me, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is it, this is it. And uh, jazz is definitely underrated. Like people today don't. There's not a lot. You know, there's not a lot of draw for jazz. You know what it is about jazz. It's, it changes your vibe. Like, you could be in a bad mood and you put a jazz record on and it, it literally changes your whole entire vibe. Like, your vibrations, everything just, they, they they go up. You feel more cheerful. For me, it's just, a, it puts me in a peaceful state of mind. And as long as I'm in a peaceful state of mind, I'm going to write a lot of good music. <laughs> okay yeah. all right. that's all that matters to be honest peaceful state of mind is the most important thing to me because that allows me to stay one track mind focused especially if i'm in the studio right my son loves jazz like he he went and took a class in school and then he just immersed himself in, in jazz and he would tell me all these like oh you know who played saxophone on this record and i'm like bro you're 25 what the fuck do you know <laughs> But jazz, as a kid, I had an I had an uncle who was he was like a renaissance man. He was into art. He was into all these different things. And jazz was one of them. And I remember as a kid him telling me, that's not music you're listening to. You hear this? This is music. And he would make me sit there and listen to it. And I used to be like, I don't want to hear this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but as you get older, you know, you get older and you start to mature, you appreciate jazz is, is something that is like wine. You can appreciate it. Because you understand what's happening, especially if you're a lover of music, right? So let's let's go back a little yeah. bit. Let's let's go back. So 
Did you have a hard time in school and graduating and all that? Were you like a knucklehead in, in any sense of the in any sense of the term? Or did you like, yo, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I want to get on with my life type shit. When I was reaching like the end of junior high school is when, you know, it was in the Bronx, man. So, you know, I got lured yeah. in and, and it was more about, you know, just hanging out and fun and all that shit. But it's like once I got to like the second year of high school, I was just on it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do what I got to do so I can get out of here, like you said, and then continue yeah. on. with my. I wanted to do music, so... You know, did you jump? Did you jump head first into music like a, a, immediately after leaving high school, or were you already like, "Yo, I'm this guy got a studio over here"? Or how did 100% that hundred percent submerged into music by the time I left high school? Yeah. Really? When I was fifteen, I went to my first studio. Um, shout out to Luciano, who was actually the first person to give me a chance to record in the studio. I have tried to go to like three, four of the studios, I booked sessions, and every time it was session day, I got ducked. And then he was just ducking. Yeah, really? He was just ducking me, like, no no phone pickup. You get to the studio, nobody answered the door. So, you know, dude gave me the first chance, and I went in the studio, and I think I sang over a We Seen Yandel beat that was popping at the time. And he heard my voice, and he started teaching me how to mess with Pro Tools, this and that. And I took that shit and I ran with it all the way. Wow. As soon as I, because to me, I realized, once I realized that it was possible to actually record myself, right? it was over. I was like, I'm not going to nobody's studio. I'm going to learn this shit myself. And honestly, from there, I just... I did everything possible because to me, I feel like if you're going to do something, perfect the whole entire craft and the surrounding area around it so that there is no chance for error. And definitely, I just took the Pro Tools. I, I even went to school for it. To, I, I learned as much as I could on my own. Then I went to school and learned as much as they could teach me there. And then I came out and I put that together and kept learning because you never stop learning in life. Never. You nope. learn something every day. You never know. You run into someone and you just might, they might say something and you're like, oh, I didn't know that. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go to school in New York City for, for engineering? No, I went to Full Sail University in Florida. In Florida? Oh, wow. You were smart. You were like, let me get the fuck out of New York for a little while yeah. and study in the sun where I don't know nobody. The sun, oh, man. It was hot over there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Fucking Florida. It's 30 minutes away from PR. Yeah, like, it's, of course it's hot. How was the experience in Full Sail? It was it was a pretty good school, man. Like, everything was just yeah. focused. Like, they they, they, they they tough on you. Like, they, they make sure that, really? you, that, that you're learning your stuff. But to me, I feel like that's important because at the end of the day, it's the best way to learn without missing information because missed information leads to error. For sure. And you grew up in the perfect time because access to to recording equipment was, man, listen, when I grew up, you had to have like five, six, seven Gs just to put a nice little something together in your crib. You grew up in a time where you could get a piece of software and a decent microphone and some headphones, you, you, you MIDI out and you're good. You could record. If you, yeah. And you could record. The only thing. High, and good quality. Is. The mixing that oh uh, yeah that's well, where that's that's where yeah. the real work comes in that's where the that's where the hard work comes in the, to be honest patience patience you gotta have a good ear oh, yeah. you need the ear and you need the patience Patience yeah. is the most important thing i tell people that all the time because I, I over the years i've tried to teach a few people engineering and by like the third day they was like i can't do this shit bro <laughs> this is too much <laughs> I'm, I must have listened to this record like 50 times. Because when you mix in, you're going to hear that record so many times. And if you ain't gonna over, you're going to you're gonna be like uh, Richie Valens and La Bamba. <laughs> <laughs> Again? Again? That was perfect. What are you talking about? But you got to get every note right. And I think that, that, you know, what you said there about, you know, people are like, ah, oh, I can't do it. 
when you go into a craft, especially music, you gotta love it. If you don't love it, you're not gonna have patience. I mean, that's it. Really goes for anything. If you if you go into something because you're like, yo, I want to do this. If you really don't have it in your heart that it's a passion of yours, it's not gonna work out. Get, it's gonna crash and you burn. Get bored fast. If you don't yep. get a passion for it, you get bored. Yep. I remember going to uh like studios like local studios friends of mine people that i knew that had studios in the basement i've been to professional studios and i was always like super duper curious you know and you go into these different settings where in in one setting is in a basement and this dude got an mp and he got a reel to reel and everything is is analog there's no digital but sound wise it's a mixture and then you go into a pay studio and this guy got a big Neve board and everything sounds so warm and nice and all the details you can hear, like every little, you know what I'm saying? Every bit of the instrumentation, you just, you hear it. Yo, this guy put a little, a little t timber over here. And then he got this fucking, this little faint bass line and he, he's lowering the shit. You just, there's so many differences, but if you don't have a passion and in your heart, you you're not going to give a fuck about none of that. Of course not. Not at all. <laughs> You'd be like, well, let so, me find something else to do, man. Cause this like, yeah, for real. This ain't it. <laughs> so, so you stood in Florida in full sail for what? For two years? A year and a half? It was about it was about a year and a half going on to. Did, did you want to stay out there? No. Nah? Did you make any connections I, 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 with people? Like, nah, nah, not really. It was it was it was more just you know school learning experience learning that was it yeah <laughs> pretty much <laughs> you i coming back home yeah that's yeah i, I you so know what it is i don't like the heat what i don't like the heat man i'm 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 a person oh, I'll, you you'll catch me barbecuing in the snow and chancletas bro no i could fuck with that's, that i i can relate to that vibe, you know that's other thoughts. All to right. be sweating twenty four seven. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you come back to New York. You have all this knowledge. What are some of the first things that you do with that with that new information that you now have that you're armed with? I went straight to the studio. Really? Immediately. Yeah. Um, I I caught up with one of my boys and um, he had a studio in my mom's building. So I went up there and I just started to get to work. I was like, you know what? I'm going to start testing all these skills and just keep on going and going until I find the, the best way to perfect this. Where I where it sounds like 100% radio ready industry music and you can't doubt anything on that record. And it, wow. it took a while. Though. <laughs> it, 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 take, it takes what? a while to find that perfect sound. Hell yeah! What was what were um what was some of the equipment you worked on that he had available for you at that time? Uh, Pro Tools. Um, it was you know it was a small little home studio, so it it, it wasn't like a a big you know recording studio. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like I've worked in right. other studios where you know it's been like Control Twenty Four mix boards and all that. Right. A lot of analog equipment. But mostly, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't too. It wasn't too much stuff. A PC, some software, Pro Tools, little MIDI keyboard, Pro Reason, Tools. You know, I used to work on Re oh, Wow Reason Logic. Gr great drums and Reason. Oh, man, Reason is a beautiful program. Very, very, very. It's funny. Underrated right now. Super underrated because it looks like a fucking video game. <laughs> And, and the inter the interface is really difficult to learn. If you, you know what I'm saying, if you don't have like a, a a person, like a kid, right, a 16, 17 year old kid could pick up Fruity Loops, and he'll learn how to make a beat. With reason, right? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people sleep. That shit is that yo. That shit is off the wall right now. Well, I remember but, when the first Fruity Loops came out. <laughs> I was hooked on those. I was like, all right, all right, let me see what this do. But yeah, yeah it's very great programs, man. All of them. They all you My boy was like weeks. Yeah, they all have their own strengths. So yeah, so Fruity Loops was more when it first came out, 
I had a friend because I was looking for for recording software, and he was like, "Yo, try Fugitives," and I was like, I just heard the name, and I was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Little did I know about <laughs> seven or eight months later, because I was trying to fuck with Reason, and I couldn't get my mind around it, bro. The navigation between working a full time job, having kids, you know what I'm saying? To sit down and look at a screen and try to navigate something that's super foreign, right? The verb you have to be familiar with the with the verbiage, you know. You have they have to have an understanding. It, it, it reason is a very is a is a very extrinsic yeah. program. Like you, this this so it's a great program, but you have to know exactly. where everything is, or else you get lost. What? <laughs> and then yeah. I went and picked I. Got rid of the reason and I picked up Fruity Loops and I was like, oh shit, this shit is easy. Well, easier. <laughs> it's, it's exactly. The learning curve learning. is not as difficult. As, as so so you're making music in the hood. Is your shit ringing out? Like motherfuckers are like, yo, what's up with the album? Like what's happening at that point in time? Well, uh, the prom the promoting the music was was very limited at the time because um I knew a lot about music per se as you know recording mm -hmm. and the records and stuff but the business part of it was I still right. had a lot to learn so I you know I wasn't really good at promoting and stuff like that but I did make my way around okay. the Bronx in studio wise so uh you know a lot of people knew me okay around that time so now I know when all this started they be like oh shit there he go you know okay yeah it, 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 it's gonna it's gonna ring pretty much you know i i had did a record with fred the god too you know I, I i knew a few people who who are um, some of your favorite producers like who's somebody that produces that you would like to work with oh <laughs> man I a few timberland timberland's definitely that's your lane that's your lane right there Timberland, um, if I go to pop music, okay. Calvin Harris, um, who's, uh, man, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very bad with names <laughs> sometimes, I'm like, I'm trying to, is, any, is like, there anybody in the I'm Bronx like, that you like, yo, this motherfucker is not on, but he's the shit? I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I, I haven't. I didn't really work with two okay. producers. Around that time, okay. I was doing my own beats. So I wasn't, you know what it was? Because I told you, once once people weren't letting me go in the studio and I and I realized I could do recording on my own, I wanted to do everything like, else by myself. Fuck y'all. I was like, you know what? I don't need <laughs> nobody for this. I'm going to learn how to do beats. I'm going to do this. Because it, 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 feels, it feels better to have more control over what you're doing. I feel like once you start delegating so much of your work to so many different people, you start to feel like you don't have control of Absolutely. the project no more. So so let's talk about control. Let's talk about uh, the status of where your work is now. Because I understand now you have a new partner. Like, I'm going to say partner. You're working with somebody new who's your partner, right? Mm -hmm. How do you... How do you balance that relationships, that relationship with him creatively? Like, are you, do you guys have like a, a, an understanding when you work together? Is there like a synergy that makes it easier or just easy to work with? I'll put it this way. We mm. both Virgos. So, <laughs> well, when we in the studio, it's just, it's always, is a vibe, 100%. We bounce ideas off of each other and... Is we're always on the same okay. frequency, so it, mm. it just works all the time. And there's never, you guys, don't find yourselves in a space of conflict. It's always a, this is what it is, and you know what, this will work. And if he's not hearing something you're hearing, or if he hears something you don't, your the the resolution is relatively easy. Okay. Always. That's important. That's super important. Always. Yeah, of course. Because if not, then you know you you you. Hey, too much clashing ends up 
causing rifts and eventually down the road, you know, that, that it, it doesn't work out. I've, I've, I've had other managers before that, and it, it usually ends up like that, you know, with, and the work now, suffers. But, but, yeah, it does because that messes with your state of mind. And if your state of mind is not right, then when it's time to write music, <laughs> It's not gonna come out the way you wanted to, or the way you right. would do it. So, so how did you how did you form this relationship with your new manager? Like, how did this all come to be? Oh man, I was training boxing mm. in a boxing gym, and he happened to be mm -hmm. in the same gym with his daughter, who was training. And I was, I think, I was warming up, or I was doing shadow boxing or something. I was doing something in there. I was working up a sweat. And then I heard him say something. He was talking to someone about music. And I heard the word studio. And my ears <laughs> was like, bling. As soon as I heard studio. And I had just moved okay. to PA. Maybe like a few months before that. So I didn't have no studio available to me at that time. So as soon as I heard the word studio, I was like, wait, hold on. Let's see what's <laughs> going on here. And then I, you know, I asked him if you know, he had a studio and he started explaining, yeah, I got a studio, this and that. And I told him, you know, that I engineered. I never mentioned right. that I was an artist. And he told me to come through to the studio. I went, you know, because he wanted to see if I actually knew what I, because, you know, a lot of people say they could do things, but to do yeah, it, when it's time to actually yeah. do things. Different story. Be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I <laughs> so, yeah, all right, but <laughs> so you know, then uh, we set up a date. I went to the studio, and you know, he gave me some projects to work on. I engineered. I started mixing, and you know, he he liked he liked the work. So we de we started developing, you know, that relationship of working together. I would come and record people in the studio. Until I think it was like a day or two later, or something like that. I happened to say, oh, you know, I do mm -hmm. music too. And I and I pulled out you know, like two three records that I had recorded mm -hmm. a few years prior, and I played them. And I mean, I saw I saw it in his eyes. It was, you know that when that light yeah, goes yeah. bling, at that moment you realize you it's it's right. there's something there, and everything just became history from there. I just started recording records. Actually, I think the first record I ever recorded in that studio was oh, wow. a reggaeton record. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this Spanish record. And the record came out dope. And then I just kept going and going. Honestly, maybe like two years after that, I started to take it. I wanted to test my level of talent. So I started jumping into other genres. You know, right now I got <laughs> country music. I got so much different <laughs> type of records. So, like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I, honestly, I just want... I'm trying to get, you know mm -hmm. what, let me reword that. I'm going to get Grammys in every single genre of music and top the charts on every single genre. That is my goal, and that's what I'm striving for. That's mm -hmm. what we're striving for, and it's going to get done. Mm -hmm. I got the music already. I got a couple albums what? worth of music. A for every albums? Album of music. Holy yeah. shit. You're going to take your horse to the Old Town Road for real? You going to do that? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm you ready. know, that I'm glad that you said that because that was that was a question that I that I wanted to ask you because music is a fucking tough business. You know, you know, you you you're in it, right? Um and I think people should learn early on to gauge to them what what success means, right? So a lot of people come and go in the business, in, in, especially when it comes to art, because there's so many people that want to be artists, whether it be music, whether it be visual, acting, uh, you know, sports. You know, those are forms of art, right? So yeah. do you have an understanding of what success means to you and for you? Because a lot of people, like I said, want to be artists. But ultimately, only so many are going to make that that level, right? You know, is is your success 
yo, I'm going to be an entertainer? Or would you see being a, a, a songwriter who, you know, writes hits for other artists, uh, a semblance of, of success to you? Would that be successful to you? That is that is a form mm-hmm. of success, but to be the pinnacle of success for me, it it, it wouldn't be. Okay. That, that okay. wouldn't be it. Because what, you know, as I mentioned before, those goals that I have, that is what I'm striving for. And I have put so much, to put so much work, blood, sweat, and tears, time, I'm talking about sleepless nights, breaking nights for weeks and months and just being in the studio all the time. There's, I want to share right. that with the world. And I want, and I want that to be left behind as a legacy with, cause I try to make my music as timeless as it can be so that 50 years from now, they can hear one of my records and be like, yo, this shit is dope. This mm. shit is still dope. It's crazy. Yeah, this, that's something that I sort of miss. I mean, I'm on in my years. I'm I'm sure I'm a lot older than you. I'm 50 years old. So I lived through a, like shifts in music, right? And for me today, in today's environment, this is something I wanted to talk to you about, uh, how you feel about today's musical environment. But for me, I feel like artists have lost that sense of longevity, right? Because there's artists t- that are with us today and not with us today that their catalogs still live. They're timeless. Their music, you could pick them up. Isley yeah. Brothers, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Like, you know, these are people that have, as you said, put in blood, sweat, and tears. And they's, they've created these immense catalogs and timeless pieces of art, right? Do you feel like, in your opinion, because I know mine, in your opinion, do you feel like artists today really strive for that level like that timeless level? It depends what music you tell. Whatever music. Whether it be hip-hop, whether it be, you know, I don't even think R&B exists anymore. I think it's like porn music <laughs> for me. Like there's no R&B. But, oh, it's all right, though. Yeah. It's coming back. It's going to be coming back soon. I got to I got to <laughs> That's what's we're about, up. We're about to bring that yeah. back. There's, uh, there's actually a lot of R&B artists, but they're not mainstream like they used to be. And they're fucking dope, but they just don't get the mainstream look. You have to look for these people. Um, But still yet and all, the, the question remains the same. Do you feel like artists, today's artists, really think about achieving longevity, like transcending time with their catalog. Honestly, from, from what I've seen from my perspective, I think it's, I think what's going around mentally is more about um, getting it done now and getting as much as we can Mm -hmm. at the moment from what we putting out and from the buzz and the type of music that is being consumed drawn to like the people are being right. drawn to pretty much as regarding longevity probably not as much and and it's probably to be honest it's probably not even being purposely done that way but subconsciously the mind is just focused more on i i'm gonna put these records out because this is what's popping now and get everything that i can off of this before the music for changes. sure i think um i'm waiting for somebody to drop a one minute song because that's where we're at. I mean, think about it. People's attention spans are, are like this, you know, they look at videos and they even, even in videos, like if you go to Instagram or or YouTube or whatever, you always see a video with a backdrop of music, whether it be the original or something they did to tweak it. Like they speed it up. They added this or that, whatever. And that catches people. Yeah. And they're like, yo, I know that song. And people have become famous off of snippets of their song. So I'm... I'm because it's a subconscious right. thing. That's what it is. It, it gets in your subconscious because it's playing in the background. And you watch that video a couple times, your brain records that. And now you go to work later and you find yourself singing it without even realizing. Or you humming the melody. And you're like, wait, <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Hold yeah, up. I'm waiting for the, for the artist to come out with a one-minute song. I think that's going to happen. 
honestly, I believe so too. I mean, look, from the 90s to now, back in the days, it was like five, four minute records, three minute records getting played on the radio. And now it's it's brought down to like people are dropping records that are like two minutes, mm-hmm. 20 minutes, two minutes and 20 seconds, two minutes, 30 seconds. So it's very possible. Like the, the, the length of songs has been going down over the years. I think Funk Flex talks too much shit. That's what I think. <laughs> so, so now you've 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 gotten uh you've built this relationship with your manager. You guys have a very unique dynamic, uh, from from other people's understandings. You know, there have been loads of artists who have connected in some way, shape, or form, either with management or uh uh, uh somebody that they're working with, whether it be an engineer or something to that level or degree. Um. What is at the top of of your guys' list at this point? Is it generating uh, enough music to start to create a buzz? Is it you trying to saturate social media? Like, what is the the direction of of what you guys are doing right now at this moment? Well, right now at this moment, I just we just released this um, Spanish single, so our the main focus we got is to push that as hard as we can mm-hmm. into the spanish market and, and spark a buzz we, we we trying to spark a very strong buzz because then from there we'll start dropping everything else and showing everyone mm. everything else i can do and the thing is that everything else is so substantially perfected music wise that you know there's no there's no denying it so once everybody hears it, it's not like, you know, you know how sometimes there'll be a Spanish artist that'll come out and then they'll drop an English record and some people won't like it because they're like, ah, it, it don't, it don't feel like his vibe. But every single record sounds like a very unique version right. of me in its mm-hmm. own way. So it's like when you hear it, you're like, ah, but you know... <laughs> It sounds a little different than his Spanish records, this English pop record, but it but it sounds like a fire pop record, like something right. that would be on the radio. So it, it, it catches in its own way. Basically, that our main main focus right now is to just generate mm. this buzz. So ultimately, you're a pop artist, right? I love pop, but generally speaking, if you had to boil it down, and I said, "Yo." Uh, God is going to come to you and ask you, what genre are you going to live in? You probably live in pop, correct? Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. My answer will be, I can't be put in a box. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Mi pa lo puede decir, I'm going to be in pop. <laughs> my music, to me, my music is okay, universal. Okay, I hear that. That's the best. That's the best way. Now, this what is what is the the performance show like? What what is your show like? Because I got to tell you, I, I've I've been to a couple of concerts in the last two years. Um, somebody who pleasantly surprised me um, was Maxwell. Maxwell is an amazing artist. When I went to see him perform, I was expecting to see him and nobody else. Right? He brought a band out. He danced. He held his notes. He didn't miss a beat. Like, his shit was on point, right? To to really reach audiences, I think that that has to be something that has to be at the forefront of your mind, your performance. What what, what is what could somebody expect from Ed in his performance? Da solito, like you by yourself, you got a band, like what's it, you got a DJ, what's going on? Mm. Right now, I, okay. I come up by okay. myself in my shows because I, I'm i trying to, you know, everybody got to prove right. to themselves something. So what I'm proving to myself is that I can go out and hold the whole entire crowd without anybody else right. helping me on stage. So basically, mainly my shows right now are just me. I go out on stage and whatever records I'm going to do, they come out natural. I give the most positive, exciting vibes and interact with the crowd, get them hype and excited, 
and make sure that they are connecting to the same mm. frequency that I'm on. So that they can feel the same passion that I feel as I'm singing the music, they're going to feel it. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 He got that. He got that. And of course, you know, I give it my all with the singing. You're going to hear, you're going to hear high notes. You're going to hear. And, and that's one thing that, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not too much of a cocky person. You know, that's just not my personality, but I can tell you this. I sound exactly the way I sound on my mm, life. Okay. So that in itself speaks volumes when I do my shows, because every time I get off the stage, that's the main thing that I hear from people. Like that mm. voice is crazy. Dumb notes, you know, Oh man, you killed that. Like that's, I, I hear that all the time. It's always like, and if it's someone that has heard my records before and then they hear me live, they're like, man, you you sound exactly the same way you sound on the record, which, you know, I we can't really say a lot of people don't. There's this there's, there's, there's artists out there, you know, that they'll record a record, the record's dope, and then they go on, you you pay for the concert, and you go and you hit them in person. It's like, am I, is this the same person I heard on the record? <laughs> Absolutely. So, I, that's not what I'm going for. I want people to be like, oh, man, this, so that the same feeling you get when you listen to the record at home, I want you to feel the same thing when you come to the show. Same mm. vibes. <laughs> same goosebumps. Because I've had people tell me that, too. Oh, man, I don't know better, you know? <laughs> so, so, tell Yo. the people, what's the latest single? That you have out now that you're like, yo, this is this is what I'm working with right now. Okay. I just put out this record. It's called La Vida Escuela. Mm-hmm. It's a Spanish record. It's a dance record. And right now, that's the main single I'm All pushing right. out. Um, it's very party, exciting. Everybody that has heard it mm. is losing their mind to it. All the females are losing their mind to it. I've already performed there in a few places and really rocked the crowd. Like as soon as the beat, as soon as they heard my voice, the one sixteen Puerto Rican. Oh wow, that's York. a tough crowd, bro. That's a tough crowd. Oh man, they was with they it. Was, they was they with was it. Screaming and dancing. They was <laughs> screaming and dancing. The record is the record. Is, you know what it is? Is it's the type of record that when you hear it, you can't help but want to move. Mm-hmm. You're gonna, you, 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 your body will do it on its own. Even if you don't want to, subconsciously, you'll see like a little twitch in the shoulder at first to start moving and then you're like, I better bet out there. It's, 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 it's uh, that type of vibe. But it's, 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 it's a banger. Yeah, I definitely, um, Joe sent me a few links and I heard the record and I was very uh, enthused by what I heard because the talent is, is undeniable. Um, and I respect the music, you know, the singing is there and that's important to a person like me. You know, I'm very critical about artists today. I really don't like the environment. Right. Um, and I, you know, people tell me, ah, you're old head. You still listen to shit. And I'm like, yeah, I'm still listening to that shit. Cause this shit is good. The pickings today is, you know, it's, it's tough because like you said earlier, they just want to get it out and get it out quick. E- e- ja, you know what I'm saying? And I can't really fuck with that. I want somebody. If I'm going to spend my money, whether it be a dollar to download it or ten dollars, 15, 25 dollars for a pre-release, I want to be able to play shit. I want to be able to play the out like I want to be able to put it on and just let it play. Right. That's I remember. I, I grew up listening to music like that. I would put it on. Yeah, they hollow and listen to the whole album. Like, yo, you you heard that shit? Hold, pick up the needle, put it back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I had a, a a young lady, a visual artist. She paints, amazing young woman. Her name is Yvonne Ferguson, and we were talking about that. And she told me she was like, "Yo, there's artists out there. It's just again not mainstream. You you know." And she started running people off, and she was like. They're out there. It's just, you know, you got to find them, you know, because what we what is being driven to us today is that popcorn shit. You know, they throw it in the microwave two minutes. You know what I'm saying? 
and I can't and I can't fuck with that. And I can appreciate somebody like yourself who's actually putting the 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 art first. You're putting who you are. You're putting your stamp on the shit. So definitely, when I heard the record, I was like, oh shit. Esta mujer va a loca, yo. They're gonna go crazy with this. Sh- and that's who buys the music. Yeah, bro. I went to. <laughs> I, there was a. There's a. a span, and I'm sorry that I'm saying this, but I, this shit is just coming to me. Um, there's a Latino artist. I forget his name. He like he got Down syndrome. Anyway, he's a like a singer, like uh, cumbias and shit like that. And I went to Radio City. Mm-hmm. Yo, they, women were in cocktail dresses, fur coats, like high heel shoes, like they hair whipped to see this dude. Just y- him, his band, you know, they don't care about the band, but his name is Luis Miguel. I don't know if you know him, but yo, this dude looks like he got Down syndrome and these women were going fucking nuts. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Fan base. So the first, the first, right. sorry to cut you off. The first, the first like full body of work is going to be Spanish music, Latino music. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. That depends. It all depends on the direction that the, you know, the career starts taking regarding the, okay. the singles that are put out. So either, you know, if, if the Spanish music is super popping and the okay. other stuff not yet, then that'll most okay. likely be it. Okay. But if not, then I'm probably gonna put out uh, uh, an album that's gonna be a nice mix of. Every, it's gonna it's gonna sound like a greatest hits album. Wow, <laughs> that would be some original shit right there. That's. The, Do you, yeah. That's okay. The, that, that's the point. Um, a lot of people in music you know business wise will be like oh we can't do that you who are we gonna market it to you're gonna market it to these people you know like how do you respond to that we, 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 we've been told that plenty of times <laughs> okay. by a lot of people but you know what it is i look at it as what i'm attempting to do not too many people have so this is something that a lot of people business wise business wise have not come across. So the format that you use to push music that they would use to push an artist and try to break an artist, that format won't fit to this. So how can I listen to that when I'm trying something that you've never actually exactly. experienced before? So, you know, we got a plan and we stick we stick true to it regardless of what anybody says because at the end of the day that's what i feel makes me me and, and if you're not true to yourself then absolutely the in doing this i was i was uh, also surprised i heard a reggae record from you and i was like wait a minute where the fuck did this come from <laughs> <laughs> uh, i had oh man we gotta, I, gotta, I gotta ask you, and I know I'm gonna probably be putting you on on the spot. Are there any reggae influences? There are uh, any reggae artists that you like? Yo, I fuck with this dude, or whoever, or what? Good records, right yeah. In general, like in, general. in general. Oh man, listen, there's a there's okay. a few people I listen to. There's a few. Oh, okay, Boy is really good. Afrobeat is taking over for quite some time right now. Yeah. That's steeped in reggae anyway. Um, I, I myself was heavy into, still am, I love reggae. Heavy into reggae. Dance hall. But not the shit that they do today. That shit is, I ain't fucking with it. <laughs> but Afrobeat, yeah, Afrobeat is definitely <laughs> is definitely crack. Oh, man. You know what? Do you have a few, you got a few Afrobeat right. joints? Fire, fire! I'm talking about fire, like so fire. I, I, I have them locked up in a special place to not let the audio <laughs> version play. <laughs> That's the type of fire. Yo, on that, so. um, 
Jesus Christ. This man does country music, pop music, R&B, Afrobeat, reggaeton. No salsa records? Oh, I got salsa. Yo, yo, listen. Let, let me say something. Let's see. If we, let's let's talk about this for a quick minute. <laughs> okay. You grew up with salsa playing in the backdrop from your mom, right? Um, yeah. My dad is a conguero de chiquito, right? Um, and I heard a lot of good music off a reel. He had a reel to reel. His brother in law sent him a reel from music that was recorded live from the fifth, the late fifties to the to the sixties. And some of the salsa that I heard on there yeah. was fucking incredible, right? Do you feel like we're losing salsa now because of the takeover of reggaeton? I don't know. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I don't think. I think salsa is a, a, a genre of music that can never be stomped away. It is like the backbone mm. of Spanish music. But who's doing salsa nowadays? You don't hear no. I I don't. I couldn't tell you a, a new salsa artist like at all from a from a new item on a fucking Wendy's menu. Like I haven't heard a new salsa. Like yo, you heard this salsa? Like you know whatever. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> you do, you do now. <laughs> he set the record straight. <laughs> yo, Ed. For... Nah, but uh -huh. yo, I'm not gonna lie to you though. I got a bachata. I got a bachata record that is gonna set the world on fire. And I've been doing like little test runs here and there. You know, I, I go to work, and you know, there's, uh -huh. there's women everywhere. And I'm like, oh, yo, you know, check out the <laughs> And the it's reaction crazy. is just, they're like, oh, my God. Like, I had a girl tell me yesterday that she she must have heard the record. Like, mm -hmm. I gave her, like, a little snippet. And she said, I listen to the snippet, like, 10 times a day, every day. Wow. But you know what it is? It's, the, it's not only the singing, it's the lyrics. Because they're so deep. They're so in-depth. You know, I, 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 I take very good time. To, to right. write these songs and I make sure that the stories make sense. Not only that they make sense, they're related. That's important. It's the type of it's the type of record that people will hear it and I guarantee you at least 10 out of a crowd of 20 will be like I just went through that yesterday. <laughs> wow. Great. I I've actually my managers actually played a record that I think mm -hmm. it was a pop record an acoustic pop record and played it for a few people that literally got emotion from hearing the record because it was like I just went through this like literally right now like he's oh, wow. speaking my life in detail that's and that and that record's called Reminisce and that's out on YouTube I think that's one of the ones that uh that Joe sent me he was like yo listen to this listen to that I, I believe it was one of them it's like a, uh, uh, just the Ed Sheeran joint. That's what I called it. I was like, "Yeah, you getting his Ed Sheeran on?" Hey, <laughs> <laughs> the first Latino Ed Sheeran dude over here. Yo, that is crazy, bro. I think that uh, you know, music is a universal language. Everybody loves music. I I don't think I've ever met any person in my life who didn't enjoy music. Right. Even right. They don't understand. Right. What it's saying. It's the vibes that get but, them. And it's a perfect point that you're making. When I used to go to dance hall in Brooklyn, like I used to go to dance hall in Brooklyn, right? All my friends were going to, you know, what what West Indian people call American clubs. They were going to, you know, uh, Emerald City and, you know, the tunnel and all that shit, right? When I first started bringing that music to my neighborhood, they were like, yo, how do you understand that shit? Like, you know, they had the, the mainstream reggae records. I didn't have those. I had shit that wasn't being played on the radio. So to understand it, you got to listen to it. They didn't understand it. But if you're in there, if you're in that shit, that shit, it, it's like a second language, right? To hear you talk about how you put your lyrics together and making a connection with a person, creating that vibe. And that's what I'm driving at. 
you know, if you're creating that vibe and you're hitting people in that connection, bro, there's, there's endless possibilities for you with your music. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's one of the most important things I think I want to impart to you. Don't ever fucking disconnect yourself from what your art is because the minute you start doing shit for other for others the way they want it the like we said earlier the work is going to suffer and that's how absolutely. you absolutely yourself too absolutely and that's one of the main <laughs> things you don't want to do and you be you're part of the machine really don't. so so let me let me ask i i meant to touch on this earlier but i want to touch on touch on it now how are you balancing especially being you know a father to a girl a young lady how are you balancing work your music and the time that you have to 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 build that relationship with her two words man <laughs> time management <laughs> that's the that's the best way to describe it honestly you know um my my daughter has been She's been submerged in, you know, my music, whole music aura since uh, at a young age. Like, she used to just sit there and break night in studios with me at age seven, eight, just because she wanted to be there. So she knows how much, you know, my passion for this is. And it's just like she, she wants, she wants me to make it. So we balance it as much as as we can i'm always there you know my daughter lives with me so uh we we balance everything pretty well i i, I mean i'm not gonna lie sometimes work can can you know you come home beat up from work and then you still gotta go to the studio and work and record records or you know it'll be friday and i gotta I come out of work and then i got a show and we gotta go to the show and then the next day we got a music mm. video shoot but it's it, it's all manageable. Mm. It's manageable if your heart's in it. Well, you, I, I would imagine your heart's in it. She lives with you, so you know. I think it's and, and I think I I, I want to say this because it's direly important to us for fathers everywhere, especially with daughters. You have to stay closer to them that closer than their own mother, because when they get older and they go out into the world, the first the, the kind of man that they're gonna look for is the kind of man you were to her. You know what I'm saying? And, and we need we need we, we need young girls that grow up to be strong women. You know what I'm saying? And that starts with us as fathers. And hey, my daughter's my number one drive besides my mm -hmm. passion for music. Cause uh, listen. Everybody goes through their moments where you wake up that one morning and you're like, oh, man, like, can I keep doing this? You know, it's, it's, so, it's so much at work and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm mentally exhausted. I'm spiritually exhausted. But then, you know, I just either she's there and I look at her face or I, or I look at my phone and I run into a photo of my daughter and I'm like, uh, nah, that's what's let's up. go. This is why. This is why I'm, I'm never. Gonna How old is she now? Uh, she's like 16. Diablo. Hey, man. <laughs> like I said before, as long as that relationship is strong, bro, it's all good. Yeah. For That's real. What it is. Yeah, I keep it very That's strong. That's what's up. My daughter, man. Everything is, everything is, you know, interaction. I teach her everything I know about music. We talk about music all the time. And I always I always make sure that there's personal time, you know, that's away from that. You know, like we'll watch movies or we'll hang out and we talk about stuff. We talk about life and things going on in the world. And as there's there's always that's constant communication. So to me that's, that's very what's important. Up. All right. So dude, I could stay here talking to you for another two hours, honestly. But I know we both have things to do. <clears throat> but before we go, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? And um, then I'm going to ask you one more bit of information before, after you do that. All right. Well, you go, my Instagram is at 
official Ed Varsten. That's official E D V A R S T E N. I'm always on there. There's a lot of great, you know, clips of me working in the studio, shows, music. Um, that record, La Vida Escorta, is my single. is out now. You can stream it on YouTube, and it's out on all platforms, Apple Music. Any platform that streams music mm. is there. So um, you can find the music there. I got a few videos out mm-hmm. on YouTube as well. My YouTube channel is also official at Varsin. And you'll find some... You, you, you'll get a little snippet of some of my other music besides the Spanish. That's what's up. Here. When's the next performance? Where are you performing next? Yeah. The next September. Where at? I have a show. Arts Quest. Arts Quest. Uh, that's what's up. Virginia. All right, people. Everybody out in PA or if you're in New York or in Philly or just anywhere nearby, you want to go see Ed put on a show? You want to see this new artist who's going to be taking shit over in the very near future? Make your way down there and go check out his show, man, and support. Support Ed Barston. Yo, Ed, real talk, man. You want to yeah. promote anything? You got a new song coming out. You got a performance. You and Joe already know. You send that shit over to me, and I'll promote the shit out of it, man. You part of the family. I appreciate your time. Um, and I, nah, no I doubt. That. It was a great yeah, conversation. Yeah. And again, anything you got going on, you're more than welcome to just come on here and promote it. Or just not even. Just reach out. Reach out to me. Send me a video clip. Yo, I'm doing a bit of whatever, and I'll promote it for you, all right? Definitely. No doubt. Say no more, man. Nah, no doubt. Well Salute to you. Salute to Joe. Best of luck. Everything going. Not even luck, man. Keep doing your fucking thing, man. I want to say, I want to hear them records on the radio, all right? All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tuck, tuck you away. Let me close out the show, and then um, we'll finish our conversation, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, right, cool. Mr. Ed Varston. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, real people telling real stories. I appreciate Ed Varston, his manager. Big things are going to come, bro. So be on the lookout. Make sure you check out his music. Go to his YouTube, his Instagram. And if you're, you know, if you're MPA, go check out his performance. Um, we'll be seeing you in another week. We had another artist coming on, R&B singer, female. And I'm not going to tell you who they are. But you're going to see them here on the set, 6145. As always, real people telling real stories. I'll see y'all next week.